perfect life. Gorilla babies and elephant babies and human babies are not so different, except that a gorilla gets to spend the day riding on his mother's back like a cowboy on a horse. It's a pretty great system from the baby's point of view. Slowly, carefully, a young gorilla begins to venture farther and farther away from the safety of his mother's arms. He learns the skills he will need as an adult. How to make a nest of branches? Weave them tightly or they will fall apart in the middle of the night. How to beat your chest? Pup your palms to amplify the sound. How to go vi uh, vining from tree to tree? Don't let go. How to be kind, be strong, be loyal. Growing up, gorilla is just like any other kind of growing up. You make mistakes, you play, you learn, you do it all over again. It was for a while, a perfect life. The end. One day, a still day, when the hot air hummed, the humans came. After they captured my sister and me, they put us in a cramped, dark crate that smelled of urine and fear. Somehow, I knew that in order to live, I had to let my old life die. But my sister could not let go of our home. It held her like a vine, stretching across the miles, comforting, strangling. We were still in our crate when she looked at me without seeing, and I knew that the vine had finally snapped. The Temporary Human It was Mac who pried open the crate, Mac who bought me, and Mac who raised me like a human baby. I wore diapers, I drank from the bottle, I slept in human beds, sat in human chairs, listened while human words um, swimmered around me like angry bees. Mac had a wife back then. Helen was quick to laugh, but quick to anger too, especially when I broke something which was often. He is what I broke, uh, here is what I broke while I lived with Matt and Helen. One crib, 46 glasses, seven lamps, one couch, three shower curtains, three shower curtain rods, one blender, one TV, one radio, three toes, my own. I broke the blender when I squeezed three tubes of toothpaste, toothpaste and a bottle blew in, in, into it. I broke my toes attempting to swing from a lamp fixture to the ceiling. I broke 46 glasses. Well, it turns out there are many ways to break glass. Every weekend, Mac and Helen took me in their convertible to a fast food restaurant where they ordered me french fries in a strawberry shape. Mac loved to see the expression on the cashier's face when he drove up and said, could I have some extra ketchup for my kid? I went to the baseball games, to the grocery store, to a movie theater, even to the circus. They didn't have a gorilla. I rode a little motorbike and blew out candles on a birthday cake. My life as a human was a glamorous one, although my parents, traditional sorts, would not have approved. Hunger. In my new life as a human, I was well tended. I ate lettuce leaves with Thousand Island dressing and caramel apples and popcorn with butter. My belly ballooned. But hunger, like food, comes in many shapes and colors. At night, lying alone in my poo pajamas, I felt hungry for the skill touch of a grooming friend, for the cheerful grunt of a play fight, for the easy safety of my nearby troop, foraging through shadows. Remember what happened to Tag? I told myself, don't think about the jungle. Still, sometimes I lay awake wishing for the warmth of another just like me, asleep in a night nest of tender prayers, plant leaves. I like having sips of soda poured into my mouth like a bubbling waterfall, but every now and then, I long to search for a tender stalk of arrowroot to feel the tease of a mango just out of reach. Still life. One day, Helen came home with something large and flat, wrapped it, wrapped in brown paper. Look what I bought today, she said excitedly as she tore off the paper. A painting to go over the living room couch. Fruit in a bowl, Matt said with a shrug. Big deal. This is fine art. It's called a still life, Helen explained, 
and I think it's lovely. I dashed over to examine the pan painting, marveling at the colors and shapes. See, said Max White, Ivan likes it. Ivan likes to roll up poop and throw it at squirrels, Max said. I couldn't take my eyes off the apple and bananas and grapes in, in the picture. They looked so real, so inviting, so edible. I reached out to touch a grape, and Helen slapped my hand. Bad boy, Ivan. Don't touch. She jerked her thumb at Mac. Honey, go get a hammer and a nail, would you? While Mac and Helen were busy in the living room, I wandered into the kitchen. A cake covered in thick chocolate frosting sat on the counter. I like cake. Love it. In fact, but it wasn't eating. I was thinking about, I was painting. It was paint, uh, um, it was painting. The frosting peaked the dip like waves on a tiny pond. It looked rich and gooey, dark and smooth. It looked like mud. I scooped up a handful of frosting. I scooped up another. I headed to the refriger refrigerator door. It was perfect, an empty white waiting canvas. The frosting wasn't so easy to work with as jungle mud. It was stickier and, of course, more tempting to eat. But I kept it at, at I kept at it. I scraped off every last bit of that frosting. I may have eaten a little cake too. I don't remember what I was trying to paint. A banana, most likely. I suppose I knew I was going to get in trouble. But at that moment, I just didn't care. I wanted to make something, anything the way I used to. I wanted to be an artist again.